Mr. Smith is a 45-year-old man with right-sided knee pain. Joint problems are great for video consultation because you can assess the joint remotely. A few things to be aware when setting up video consultation is to make sure that your internet connection and the patient's internet connection are good. Otherwise, this will impact on the quality of the video. The next thing is to make sure that your lighting is good and the patient's lighting is also good. Before starting the consultation, consider advising the patient about sitting down somewhere comfortable where the light is shining on the face. Following that, you may confirm the patient's identifiable with name and date of birth. I would recommend you confirm patient's identifiable and take the consent yourself even if it's being done on 14 Fish platform. By confirming the patient's identifiable and gaining consent for the recording, you're building rapport with the patient and you're making sure that the connection is also good before you start your consultation. It also helps you buy time because the time will start only after the consent. Assuming that you have confirmed this is Mr. Smith and you have gained his consent for the recording, how will you start the consultation? What will you ask Mr. Smith? The best way to start the consultation is with an open question so you can understand the story of the knee problem. You may ask the patient, how did the pain start? This open question will encourage the patient to tell you the story. Give the patient your time and attention and listen to the story. Make sure that you're listening actively to the patient. After one and a half minutes, most patients will have unfolded their narrative and it's time for you to ask some follow-up questions or close and question. What questions will you ask Mrs. Smith? You may want to ask about the severity of the pain, whether the pain is spreading anywhere, any associated symptoms such as stiffness, whether the patient has noticed any swelling, any relieving or worsening factors. As always, make sure that you ask about red flag question. With knee pain, it's important to ask about any history of trauma or injury. If the patient has sustained an injury, make sure you ask about the mechanism of the injury. If the patient tells you that they have developed swelling, make sure you ask history of the swelling. How long did the swelling start? Did the swelling come on rapidly after the injury? Ask about fever. Ask about the presence of night or rest pain. If the patient is experiencing pain at night or at rest, then it could be a sign of something more nasty going on. Ask whether the patient can walk on their knees. If the patient can't walk on it, then it's more severe. Ask whether the patient's knee locks or give ways. You may want to explore past knee injuries. If the patient had previous injuries with the knees, this could be relevant. As always, explore the patient's health belief model. Ask questions about ideas, concerns, and expectation. Make sure that you ask this question in context. Don't ask this question sounding formulaic. So you may ask Mr. Smith, have you had any thoughts as to what is going on? He might tell you, I'm worried about arthritis. You may ask the patient whether there's anything concerning them. Can you tell me what is concerning you with your knee? And you may ask the patient about anything that they were hoping from today. Mr. Smith tells you that he's hoping to have some glucosamine supplement because he has read on the newspaper that this is very good for a knee problem. Make a note of the patient's ideas, concern, and expectation because you need to readdress that in the later stage of the consultation. It's no good just asking about ideas, concern, and expectation if you're not going to address them. Joint problems can limit the function of patients, so it's important that you cover psychosocial and occupation history. Ask the patient how their knee pain has impacted on their work, on their home life. Some patients may be quite active. For example, if the patient has been running quite a lot, then this knee pain may be restricting his hobbies. If it's appropriate, you may ask about smoking and alcohol. Make sure that you use the information already in the patient's note. The next step is examination. MSKs are suitable cases for remote examination and you're likely to spend less time in examination if you're doing it over video consultation. You can examine the patient's joint remotely with the patient's help. At this point, you may explain to the patient that you need to examine them and ideally you'd like to examine them yourself, but because of the pandemic and the change in consultation, you can do a remote assessment and whether they are happy with that. Then explain to the patient what exactly you're going to do for the examination 
And if you're needing the patient's assistance, for example, then let them know that I will need your help to examine your knee today. So how will you phrase this to the patient? It will be helpful for me to examine your knees today, Mr. Smith. Ideally, I'd like to examine you myself, but due to the pandemic, we were doing consultation remotely. So we will try to examine you on the video consultation. I may need your help to examine you. So what I need to do is to have a look at your knees. I will ask you to have a feel of your knees and to do some movements with your knee. Are you happy with that? Be mindful that you keep the patient's dignity and you're not overexposing the patient. When you examine the knees, you can use the look, feel and move steps to compare both knees, make sure that you verbalize what you're looking for. This will help the examiner to know how you're examining. Ask the patient to have a feel of the knee themselves and point to where the pain is. And ask them to do some movement. You may ask them to squat, for instance. Once you have completed data gathering, it's time for you to move into clinical management. Ideally, you need to have covered history and examination within six to seven minutes. By now, you need to have a good idea what's going on with Mr. Smith's knee. You may consider whether he needs investigation or not. Investigations are generally not required to diagnose knee pain. However, if there's diagnostic uncertainty or deterioration, or there's sudden clinical deterioration in the patient's symptom, or if you'd like to exclude alternative conditions, then you may go ahead and request investigations. What investigations will you request if you feel this patient needs to be investigated? You may wish to request x-ray of the knee. You may want to do blood tests, including full blood count, ESR, or anti-CCP. Think about your differential diagnosis. What could this knee pain be? It could be patellofemoral pain, meniscal tear, ACL tear, bursitis, or osteoarthritis. Let's say you have diagnosed this patient of early osteoarthritis. How will you explain this diagnosis to Mr. Smith? When explaining a diagnosis, it's vital to use simple language that a layman will understand. Before explaining the diagnosis, it's helpful to know the pre-existing knowledge of the patient on osteoarthritis. A useful phrase is to tell the patient, I know when you first came you were worried about arthritis. Having listened to your story and examined your knee today, I think you have what we call osteoarthritis. What do you know about osteoarthritis? This phrase allows you to verbalize your thought to show to the examiner that you have listened to the patient's ideas and you're also checking the patient's baseline knowledge on osteoarthritis. After you've asked this question, the patient will tell you what they know about osteoarthritis. If they don't know anything, then they'll just tell you, I don't know, doctor. Then you can go ahead and explain what is knee osteoarthritis. So you may say to the patient, osteoarthritis is wear and tear of the joint cartilages. And when the bones are grinding on each other, then you may have symptoms such as pain. Don't forget to address the patient's expectation. This gentleman wanted to have glucosamine because he thought that this is what he needs for his knees. How will you address that? Explain to the patient the number of ways to manage the knee pain and let them know that glucosamine is not something that you would recommend because there's no evidence to use over-the-counter glucosamine for their problem. Then go ahead and discuss the management options for Mr. Smith. You may want to classify your management into conservative, medical and surgical management. Make sure that you involve the patient when formulating your management. This is where the psychosocial history is important because you can tailor the management to the patient's need. For example, if this patient needs to have lifestyle changes, including weight loss, muscle strengthening exercise, then you can actually tailor the management to their need. If the patient is not taking any medication, then you can recommend analgesia to relieve the symptoms. Medications include paracetamol and topical NSAIDs or first line. If the pain is not controlled by first line medication, then you may go ahead and consider opioids such as codeine. Make sure that you discuss about the side effects of codeine. Consider referral to physiotherapist or podiatrist. If the patient has tried conservative management and medical management, then you may consider intraarticular corticosteroid injections for moderate to severe joint pain. If medical treatment has failed, 
consider referral to TNO or a musculoskeletal clinic. As always, make sure that you complete your clinical management with safety net advice. Let the patient know that if the symptoms are not controlled with self-care and simple analgesia to reconsult, advise the patient while the warning signs to look out for, consider arranging a follow-up assessment in four weeks' time to see the progress of the treatment. If you have any suggestions, any comments about how you would approach this case, please let me know down in the comment section. I look forward to reading your comment. If you have any suggestion on what case to cover next, please let me know down in the comment section. I hope you like this video. If you enjoy watching this video, please smash the like button. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.